2022 antelope hunt. I want to introduce the team. That's the famous Donnie D. Donnie, say hi. Oh, hello. And his beautiful wife, Becky. Hi. We have three antelope tags. We're back in the same place in New Mexico. We're somewhere in the middle of the super dry hunt and the super wet hunt, somewhere in the middle. And we're excited to get started. What else do we say? What do, what do, what do like YouTubers do? Do I need to be more animated? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> All right, let's go find us a goat. Y'all, I have known Donnie and Becky for many, many years. And Becky always wanted to hunt an antelope and it just worked out perfect. The landowner says, hey, I need to take three antelope off here this year. Do you have the bodies? And I said, absolutely. Within the first hour of being on the ranch, Becky had identified the one that she liked. We got in position. She makes a fantastic shot and we've got one in the bag on opening day. That's awesome. Hell yeah. <laughs> we notched that tag and then loaded up that antelope and took him to a place that was ideal for photos. Then we stood around for a few minutes, paid this animal a little respect, talked about the situation collectively and enjoyed ourselves. Then we got right to work, quartering him up, got him all caped, down in the cooler, good and cold, and Donnie was on deck. We drove right back into that same pasture and two new antelope had fed in. Donnie said, I like that one on the right. Got set up and we're about to fill tag number two. Congrats on your first goat. Thank you, sir. Brought him in here just to shade up a bit because it's hot. Super cool goat. Grab his head, Donnie, and turn him around as the tip. As Ryan would say, super blonde. Yeah, look at his cape. That's the part that's probably the most unique. I don't know that I've ever seen one quite so blonde up top there. He's hot. 107, it just said. So, we backed into the shade of this old tin building. You've seen we've got two speed goats down, two pronghorn antelope. We've got them all butchered up in the coolers and we're gonna do what I've done over and over and over again. You'll see it as long as I'm alive because I'm gonna encourage you to make this dish, sandwich, whatever. This is gonna be our antelope loin steak melt. It is absolutely wonderful. Check it out. Okay, here you go. You're gonna need a bell pepper, sweet pepper. I don't care if it's green, orange, yellow, red, whatever. Just cut it up nice and tight. Dice it into little tiny pieces. You're gonna need to do the same thing with an onion unless you find a super cool container of already diced onions like I did here. And then you're gonna need some hatch chilies from New Mexico. I would encourage you to buy it roadside if you're there. You put everything down in the pan, a little bit of butter or olive oil, and just get that stuff to fall in love. You know me, I like to caramelize my onions and peppers and get them cooked down to where they've almost got like a little char on them. It changes the flavor, it changes the texture, and I think is the key to this sandwich. Then take whatever part of the antelope you're eating. In this case, we're having Becky's antelope loins. I cut those up nice and tight, just like we did with the peppers. I put them in that pan and I give it about 60 seconds to just knock off any of the red. I don't need to cook them any further because they're gonna continue to cook inside the melts. Then, butter your bread. In this case, a hearty bread like a sourdough is ideal. I put a little Parmesan down in the pan, then I put that buttered bread down on top of it, and then I layer cheese. 
whatever cheese you like. In this case, we have one piece of provolone and one piece of gouda. I've used everything, use whatever you like. Then put your steak, peppers, chilies, all that right on top and a little Parmesan on that top piece of bread and then just grill it up until everything is golden brown and your cheese has melted. If you ever do this, you will thank me in person. All right, how, how is it? It is very good. Could use some seasoning. Could use a little bit of salt, <laughs> but the Parmesan on the outside is very delicious. It's divine. Yeah. Awesome. And can you antelope. taste the can you taste the chili in it? Yes, I can. Okay. It is a very it's a very light hint of it. Good. It's delicious. I think that's what actually adds that flavor where you don't really need the seasoning. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could use a little bit on it, but you don't really need it. Yeah, definitely we would hit it with that Tony season. You get a little heat out of that too. Mm -hmm. I don't taste the chili in mine. There's no chili in mine. Oh, that's why I don't taste it. You got the kids' version. <laughs> True report, Donnie. I can see the look on your face, you're gonna lie. <laughs> I have something really good to say. <laughs> I held back. <laughs> no, that's good. There's nothing bad about it. It's good. It doesn't need any flavor, it doesn't need any seasoning, it doesn't need nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Fresh. Well, I'm a plain person, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't like anything on my sandwich, so it's perfect. Yo, buzzard! Left wing for antelope. Right wing for mule deer. That's a good choice. After lunch, we got right back after it. On the way to the field, we passed by the antelope that Becky had shot in the morning, and I thought you would appreciate how fast the animals picked everything clean. There was just guts and bones there, but I mean, they took it down to nothing. Within the hour, we were back on a couple of really good shooter antelope. I got in position a few times and it just never really presented itself. So we just traveled around checking every little boundary that hit the state land because we had to stay on private and right in the corner of us, a beautiful goat was standing there feeding. We set up, made the shot, and we've got all three antelope done on opening day. Ooh, got him. There he goes. It's amazing what happens when all the tags are filled and all the pressure comes off. You don't even know you're feeling pressure until it's done. We enjoyed the sunset, went back to the hotel, got a fantastic night's sleep. The next morning, we helped the landowner out with a little bit of prairie dog trouble, and then we headed for the house. You know the drill. If you would, please remove your hat. I'd like to close in prayer. Lord, thank you for amazing friends. Thank you for generous landowners, well-managed wildlife and opportunity. Thank you for the skills, the tools, and the platforms that allow us to share these fantastic experiences. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.